One of the biggest problems at sea are salt sores. They're caused when salt water gets on the skin, evaporates and leaves the salt behind. Caught between clothing and skin, the salt can cause quite serious abscesses. A sheepskin rowing seat is critical to look after your bottom and washing in fresh water daily is essential. However, the most efficient solution is just to row naked. You just have to be really careful when you get the camera out. So no, you can't you can't see anything. I'll turn my torch on just for a second. It is 20 to 9 GMT, but I think we're three hours time zone wise away from from GMT, so 5:40 I guess. So coming up for six o'clock. I mean, I've just done a couple of hours rowing, finished off yesterday's uh, mileage. Had my breakfast, which was coffee and biscuits, and waiting for my porridge to cook. I was sat with my head torch off. The wind's calmed down a little bit. You can see from the from the flag. So we've still got we've still got some wind, but it comes over the back of the cabin, and I sit out of the way of the wind. So I'm going to turn my head torch off. I've just been sat for 15 minutes, just listening to the to the ocean. It's incredible. It's so quiet and peaceful. Unbelievable. Here we go. There you go, that's the middle of the Atlantic <coughs> and you could be on a beach anywhere. <laughs> it's just incredible. It's quite a, quite a dark night, there's a few clouds about. The moon disappeared about an hour ago. The moon's nearly nearly full, it's about a three quarter moon, so it's very, very bright until it disappears. It shines through my little back cabin window all night. In fact, it's like having the lights on. It's probably better than having the lights on. So you can't see that many stars tonight. There are a few little ones out. Okay, so that's that. It is Friday the 6th of January. I've just done my 60 for yesterday, I think, so that's good news. Another 60 in the bag. It uh, might be a bit tougher today. The wind's only predicted to be 15, so we shall see whether I can do, um, do 60 again, but I shall do my best. There we go. The sunrises are absolutely stunning. Better than the sunsets, I think. So that's east, and we're kind of heading just under west. Powder blue sky, it's going to be a hot day today I think. Okay, so it's um, Saturday the 7th, <coughs> I have no idea what day that is, 14 and 31, 46 maybe. Yesterday was kind of alright, did my 38, 39 miles before I turned in, thought I'd get a decent drift and make 60 this morning. When it was finished though, I was getting sucked north, so I don't know quite what that was. Tony said there were no currents on the chart, but it doesn't really mean anything, I guess. But anyway, I was getting sucked north, I had to head quite heavily south to just keep on, on track. Anyway, I turned in thinking I'd still get a kind of half decent grip, managed to get the boat going in the right direction, had a couple of hours sleep, woke up at about 2.30, and um, we were still drifting in the right direction, but very slowly. Fell asleep again, woke up at about 5 o'clock, just before 5, and we'd, we'd moved one mile since 2.30, which is not good enough. Uh, we're going to get 60 miles in a day, it just doesn't work. So, ended up getting out of bed, getting on the oars. It, just, it was even hard work getting the boat going on the oars. I think we probably ended up doing about 54 or 55. So then I had a bit of breakfast and started on today. The first session today was just probably the toughest I've had in three or four weeks, if not the entire trip. And I've said that loads of times, oh today's the toughest day of the entire trip. But it was just a bit like pulling on the oars and the boat not even moving forward. I mean it was just really hard. So I plugged away, did three hours, which is it's normally a two hour session that first session. So I'm going to do four three hour sessions in today as well as just short of three hours this morning, so it'll be nearly 15 hours in the water today. It's a long day. It's still slow going today, so there's no 60s in the, in the wind. I need to try and stay in the mid-50s, I guess, to try and get in on uh, Monday morning, um, or sometime on the Sunday. I need to do 55s all the way if I'm going to get there on the Sunday, um, which would be nice, because it'll be great to see the I think they've had enough of their crews. And, uh, So, um, that's it really, just plugging on it. Looking red hot, and hard work, and uh, I don't know why. I would expect it not to be hard work. I'm rowing across 
see Atlantis for God's sake. Um, but um, keep plugging away and we'll see where we get to today I guess. This will, I think today will tell us how quick I'm going to get there rather than knowing those 60s that I've been in the last 4 or 5 days. So we shall see. That's it for now. Sunday the 8th of January. Not a lot of cloud about this morning. It's the first time in probably the whole trip. The moon is nearly full. So it's probably, probably 4 o'clock in the morning here, maybe 5 o'clock in the morning, I guess. When the, when the moon's out this bright, you can only see the main stars. As soon as it disappears over the horizon, you can see billions and billions of stars. That's it. Monday the uh, 9th of January. I've just uh, I've got an hour left of my, my second session of the day, um, or my first session of the new day. Just wanted to show you the uh, conditions at the moment. Big storm messing up the water. See, it takes about 180 degrees of the horizon. The sun's just gone behind this massive black cloud. And um, it's really mucking up the water. Kind of neat the rain over in the distance, if you can see that. Looks like it's coming down in two different directions. Creating a big black bead. I'm just hoping that it all scoots past me to the northeast, and I'm just on the edge of the rough water. Yesterday was an okay day, 55 miles. We were heading more south than west yesterday to avoid a current apparently, so um, did that, slowed me up a little bit. But if I don't get caught in the current, overall I'll benefit. And I'm also further south, so when the east wind starts blowing, this wind's supposed to be coming from the from the east northeast today and it's coming from the north northwest at the moment so there you go all right i need to grab a bit of porridge and then get back to the oars okay so everybody's always asking about um, how i cook so i thought i would uh, demonstrate how i cook and, uh, just put my glasses on the sun shining right in the eyes okay so it's pretty simple and straightforward it's all dehydrated and you open it out this little sachet because it's not seasoning, it's uh, food dry. And then you put your bowl. Making sure you're out of the wind. It's a savoury mince. about this morning. So we're, um, we're going off course today, heading south, um, underneath that course. Tony has suggested that the closer, the closer we get to Barbados, the more west we go, the harder it is to get south. So um, we've got this northeast wind and we're taking advantage of that to get a little bit of south in our course. So this morning I'm now 2.5 miles, nautical miles, underneath my track line. So I'm further south than, than the GPS recommends. So I'll keep that going through today. And uh, so I'm heading for about about 240 on the compass, which is about 250, 255 for the deviation. And uh, it should make it a bit easier. So we'll come down towards Barbados a bit steeper and then turn and cut across to, um, to Barbados due west and that should be okay. Apparently the rays, because they're further north, they'll have even more trouble. So if they just keep on their straight heading, they could get really slowed up over the last couple of days and have trouble hitting their marks. So that would be kind of interesting. Got ticked off by Mr. Theobald in a, in a note about mentioning the rays. In my defence, I didn't pick Barbados because it was um, the place that the race didn't finish. They always finished in Antigua and then they changed. So I don't feel that um, I don't feel that bad about having a digger, especially as they can't seem to get past me. Right. So that's it, water's boiled. Didn't take long. Stick it in there. One 
the things on the boat is that you have to be careful where you put everything so stuff doesn't go over the side. I lost a lid to the jet foil. Fortunately, I brought two jet foils. Stir it up. But you have to have a real good routine for ev absolutely everything that you do, otherwise you end up losing all your bits and pieces. Put the lid on it. I'm going to read that for 8 to 10 minutes. Now, I normally read it till the first hour of my next row. And I've got some... This doesn't look very appetising, but it's really nice. Um, crisp bread. And I've got half a dozen of these loaves. And I use them as eating implements. And it's really nice to have some bread and you dip it in the whatever it is, curry. It's really nice with curry. And, um, and you've got some bread. And that's it. That's my food. So while that's cooking, I should have some chocolate. Because I'm allowed to. I shall never eat chocolate again after this whole thing. See, my hands are doing okay. I've got, no, they look a bit scabby and skinny, but um, I've got no sores. Nothing's painful. And um, they're more so on the back from, from knocking things, from crashing the oars together. Or my nails sometimes scratch the back of my hands. Arthritis is playing up a bit, but you do do about that. That's it. Okay. Show you that this is Wednesday the 11th at 2100 GMT, so so it's probably only five o'clock local time. It's been flat calm all day, hardly any wind, and now there's these big squalls developed. I don't know if you can see that one in the distance. Just past my flag here. There's another one over there, and there's a, a rainbow. So I don't particularly want to get caught in anything. As soon as the sun goes, it's miserable when you're wet. There you go, but at least we got some wind. Might just be with this local squall that desperately needed some, some wave action. It's been so hard today. So hard. Went across the current earlier. That'd be down to 1.8 knots for two hours. Okay, that'll do. piece to camera for a couple of days. Uh, it's been really busy with busy. <laughs> I haven't been busy, I'm just rowing every day. But it just the time seems to have flown and then I've been pooped so I had a really really hard day yesterday. The wind had died down, no energy in the water at all. So, I mean, you can see it's really bright but it's 40, 47 degrees or something like that. And it is so hot when you when the wind's not blowing hard. It's been hard again but a bit easier than yesterday, not not much. We've got we're a bit more in the swell in the general swell, but there isn't a lot of it. Although it's picked up the last hour and a half or so, so it's got slightly easier. I'm hoping it progresses through the, through the day. Now the big the big thing is on Thursday, Friday, Saturday there's supposed to be a 20 to 25 knot wind. If 25 knots is when the boat gets out of control. So I'm kinda I want the wind. I don't want 25 knots. I don't know, it looks like we're going to get to Barbados on Sunday morning. Aiming for kind of between 8am and 10am. 10, 10 and then nip round the corner to Port St. Charles. I really don't want to be approaching North Point with no control over the boat. From 20 foot high swells. <laughs> Could be a disaster. But all we can do is uh, accept the weather that's there. Hope it picks up a bit this afternoon clouds out roasting. And that's it really. But I am quite excited now about, about getting there. Uh, I guess if you don't count today, we've got Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, so four days rowing. And uh, we could be in Barbados after today. So that would be nice. Only a handful of days left now. What could possibly go wrong?